Hello, and welcome to Wyverns and Weirdos, a D&D podcast set in the world of Fier Law. Uh, so, does anyone have any plugs this week? We're getting towards the end of August. Um, so, 23rd of August, it will be my birthday later this week. Happy uh, birthday, Darby! Happy birthday, Darby! Happy birthday, birthday Darby! Uh, there, there may or ne- may not be some form of celebration, either on the day or as part of next Monday's episode, or both. Who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, yes, uh, as always, if you want to support the show, the easiest way you can do it is uh, by mm-hmm. sharing the podcast around. Uh, but if you want to go the extra mile, uh, you can get merch through our Redbubble store, um, and you can get um, things like DM notes and uh, homebrew, as well as early access to episodes through our Patreon. Um, so, without further ado, let's jump into another episode of Wyverns and Weirdos. So, where we last left off, the party, uh, the last of the party who had not yet met them, met Teddy the Pegasus. Um, then the party as a whole met with the, or at least most of, the Arcane Convocation and the Lords of the Seven, um, and discussed what would be happening going forwards regarding retaliation to the strike from the Wizards of the Ruins. As part of this, they were given a timeline of a month uh, to root out the Wizards from Karas, otherwise war would be declared uh, of, upon Karas by uh, by Erethold in retaliation. Uh, so, uh, and and we ended with uh, final prepar- or with preparatory discussions and Bertie taking Caius to go visit Caius's father's uh, mausoleum. Um, so um, Bertie and Caius, I believe, on your way back, you were quickly ducking by. Bertie's store. Was there anything in particular that you were grabbing from there? Uh, no, um, Bertie is just, uh, I'll very quick, quickly describe Bertie's store. So Bertie has a little store. Um, yes, so this it's is the first co- time it's been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kai has been there before. The, all the staff will know him. Um, the store is like, uh, quite small, kind of like tucked in between a couple of other stores. Um, it's um again that similar kind of pale pink on the outside with like little white sort of um decals it's like flowers kind of like growing up over the like doorway um it has like a really fancy like golden purple sign that says uh bay warren's boutique of bewilderment um and inside it's like purple and pink and it's very like like hodgepodge kind of like little curio store um lots of like potions and things like that there are some elixirs but they're just kind of like there as decoration but if someone wants to buy them you know but a lot of just like general like odd little magical items um i then i imagine yeah. the the new the the new versions of the elixir probably have some sort of basic like sensory effect yeah they do them. some things they're just more of a novelty than an yeah, actual precisely 
And um, they also have um, actually near those as well in like a little like probably completely different like little business card like style. I imagine is it like Tanips Tonic or something that like mm -hmm. like Newman and Anya suggested ages ago? Potions made by Tanip. Are there Tanips called Tanips Tonic, Darby? Uh, they probably would be. Yes. Just because alliteration is a great marketing technique. Hell yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, it's very like, but yes. And there's like lots of more little flowers and pots and everything everywhere, but mostly like strange little magical items. Um, and yeah, Bertie will duck in and like um, let uh, Marigold or Quinn know. Um, they yeah. were, two, were both like human teenagers. Uh, Marigold's yeah. 18, I believe. Um, Quinn is very enthusiastic and 15. Um, and he'll quickly discuss with her. Um, we'll be like, oh, yeah, my friend Kai's here, by the way. Ha, ha, ha. Um, who are they? Yeah. <laughs> you know very well um, that but he's going to have to go away for a bit. Um, if he needs anything as well, he's also going to give them, like, a sending stone. Um, I presume that Bertie will have the other half of that yeah. to message him once a day, updating how the store is going. Yep. And um, if they need anything, let him know, but he will be um, out of out of town for a fair bit so um other than that that's what they should do um if there's anything kai wants to pick up from the store he can um but betty kind of just like ducks in goes and has a look around like just rearranges a couple of things um and um gives him a couple of pointers but that's about it okay. Kaius will just have general conversation with the um uh anyone who's in the shop really um <laughs> I imagine, because Caius has been to this shop a few times, I imagine every time he's there, it's always like he'll stay for you know, anywhere up to like an hour or hour and a half just having conversation. Uh, not really there to buy anything, he's just that customer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's fair. Okay. Bertie, unfortunately, also talks a lot about Kai, so his stuff are like, oh, yep, this guy. <laughs> let's let's keep him entertained. Yeah. Um, and then Bertie will pat her yeah. out and they'll All right. pot her back. Yeah. Pick um, up something to eat, I don't know. Were, were there any other things that people in general wanted to get done uh, other than Anya talking to Athena uh, while waiting for the... the um, the delivery of of your supplies. You would like to buy some potions? Yes. What potions were you looking for? Healing, please. Okay. Um so you you're able to um you're able to locate um a few different potions on sale at different places. Um on sale. Oh. Like for sale. They're not, they're not. Are up. there any on sale because that would attract Newman, Newman's attention? Um, no. <laughs> Bertie. No. <laughs> no. Oh, your Bertie's elixir's on sale. Yeah, absolutely. You should come buy some. <laughs> um, so there is, there is one, uh, that you're able to track down of Supreme Healing. I'll take it. Um, so that is, that, that is going to cost about, uh, 10,000 gold. Mm hmm Um then uh then you can find uh four of superior. I'll take. Okay, so they are they are uh a thousand each, so that's another uh four thousand. Thank you. Um there Do I get a um a sort of like a loyalty card for whatever store this is because I'm buying a lot of stuff. Roll me a persuasion check. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, so Newman will sort of come in here. He's like, now, I know I'm sort of new uh, here, but I will probably be coming back here often. Um, and yeah, I was just wondering, like, if I'm a returning customer, um, <clears throat> and he sort of chokes on his words as he rolls a five. Uh, <laughs> that's terrible. Okay. Um, yeah, no, they... They do not. Um, so, uh, so one of there are um, six greater, which cost five hundred each. 
I'll give myself. I'll take away three thousand five hundred for all of them. Okay. Is that it? You don't. You don't want any uh, regular. There no, are, no, there no. Are, okay. yeah. I'm beyond regular healing yeah. potions at okay. this stage. <laughs> oh yeah. So you have six greater for. Uh... Yeah. Six four my god, and one. just took a plummet. Oh my six, god. Six four and one. Thank um, you very much. Okay. Thank you. And then Newman will go and find whoever most likely Ross. Um, or one of the people who left first. Yeah, Ross has probably just been uh, loitering near Sam awkwardly with like her arms crossed, just kind of following whoever around. So Newman would probably find her pretty easy. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah, uh, he just comes with like his hands full of potions. <laughs> oh, but do you need? Yet with a frown on his face. Uh, do you need help with that? Um, I think I bought too many. Uh, That's, there are a lot. Do you have a bag? I I do, but it's just. They put them in my hands and then, oh, like, okay. I can't let go to put them in my bag without dropping them. So, okay, if you okay, help, okay. That would be amazing. Yeah, no, that's all good. She's going <laughs> to do the thing I do a lot with my friends, apologies to Newman, where she's going to. Is it like a backpack or like a side bag that he's. Got? It's like a side bag. She's gonna go to his bag, open it up, and start taking bottles out of his bag, out of his hands, and putting it in his bag for him instead of taking any of the bottles and making his load lighter. She's just packing his bag, and she's trying to pack it very efficiently for him. Um, Newman's like, be be very careful with that one. <laughs> oh, uh, this bottle is very fancy. How much did that set you back? Don't ask. Ten, ten thousand. Ten thousand. She ironically enough nearly drops it in excite, like in shock, and then like grabs it and clutches it to her chest. Like, uh, you find when that happens, the red liquid starts to glimmer quite reactively. Oh. I just read in the description here when it's agitated, it glimmers <laughs> red. <laughs> ha. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna, um, we're gonna, and she digs around in his bag and finds, like, any piece of, like, cloth and, like, wraps it around the glass and then puts it in the bag. And then nice. continues packing all his little bottles <laughs> away. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, cool. Uh, is everyone else back yet or we're still waiting? Uh, not quite yet. Bertie and Caius went off to do some stuff. Uh, Rook was talking with Tyshawn while we were on our way back. Uh, I think Anya's talking to Orfina, so it's just us. Yep. Um, I actually don't know. I, I didn't ask. Are we leaving Sam with the complication or are we bringing Sam with us? I'm assuming Sam cannot hear us, that we are, I, like, no. stepped far he's, enough. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's within I like, he's within sight, but he's not within earshot. Oh, because he, yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, so Ross is going to lean in and just very privately say to Newman, uh, in the nicest way possible, I don't think he's willing to be left behind. And are you okay with him coming along? I have to be. For the entire mission? Yes, Newman. I am fine with it. Okay, then I am too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, cool. Well, I really haven't got anything else to do. All my stuff is back home. So, um... Yeah. yeah. Did you need a hand with anything? Or do you want to twiddle thumbs together? 
we can twiddle our thumbs together. I um, I was going to talk to the others about us going to Bopsa first. At least then I can drop off. We can drop off our outfits from last night, um, and we can we can tell the others that maybe they should uh, find somewhere to bunker down if worse comes to worse. Yeah. But, uh, I guess we don't know where this is going to lead us to and what it's going to do to home. and So mm. maybe for the best. Yeah. Want to do a thumb wall? <laughs> Absolutely, I want to do a thumb wall, Newman. <laughs> Perfect. And now that Newman's hands are free, he's free to thumb wall all he likes. All right. Yes. Um... As that is happening, uh, Anya, Rafina, uh, catches up with you. Um, you want to talk? I, um... I know we haven't spoken much, uh... Recently, regarding the artifacts, um... Many of them have now made their way back to their homes, thanks to you, um... But there are still a few left, and I don't feel comfortable leaving them unprotected. And I don't feel like it would be safe for them to come with me. I, I, if you wish, I can, um, I, I can put them in safekeeping. Even hallow the ground so that they're, uh, with some extra protection. I, um, I think that would be best. But, Ofina, I've known you for a while now, and I hope I... I trust you. No one on the convocation or the council must know. Of course. This can't happen again, no matter how trustworthy you think they are. Power poisons. it can thank you and good luck you know how to reach us if things go south of course same to you I'm sure some among your numbers have uh, ways of initiating ascending if you need us find us Boss. All right. Um, so, unless there's anything else that people wanted to do with the day, um, I take it Rook probably communicates uh, what they want to with the uh, with the order in the usual methods. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she'll um, talk them and do that. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. And Bertie would probably message people and be like, hey, um, head back to my place when you guys want to. Sorry, Mitch. No, that's right. Uh, once we are all back together, Caius will very quickly bring up the point of um, if we want horses. Yeah, true. Could that- we teleport with horses feasibly? I'm very excited about Anya getting a horse. Um, <laughs> like... Technically. Yes. Yeah, technically. I believe the specification on teleport, hold on, is willing creatures, but I can only transport, including myself, nine of us. Yeah. So there's six with the party. There's seven with Sam. Uh... 
there's eight with Teddy. So I can have one more horse. Right. The other thing is because you've got those scrolls. No, we're not wasting the scrolls on extra horses. Like it's, what, what is that Darby? Well, what I was going to say <laughs> is that like, if you were going to use a scroll to head over to, um, to Karas anyway, you could use the one that you were going to use to get over there for nine people and then have Rost cast teleport for the other nine. Uh, we can or probably however, get horses. Like, we can steal horses we, in Karas. We might have yeah. to buy horses in Karas, I guess. Are you going to, um, but he like kind of like taps cars on the side. Are you going to bring uh, Teddy? Well, I'm, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we have been practicing um, mm. how to fight alongside each other, but I'm not sure if the aim of the game is trying to be stealthy. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's... Might be difficult. Particularly quiet. I mean, I've been practicing my stealthing, but um, Theodore has not. No. As such. Well, I mean, can you uh, try and be stealthy, he says to <laughs> Theodore. <laughs> um... They don't nods. <laughs> what that mean? Progress. Okay. Cool. Oh, I could take him and then keep him somewhere safe if we... I don't know. I mean, potentially. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know. Where, where are we looking at? Uh, teleporting is it? Yeah, yeah. A safe place so, or what's what's first port of call, everyone? Um, assuming we're going tonight. Uh, Ross, who has been thumb warsing furiously with Newman <laughs> and one, yes, <laughs> ha! opposed acrobatics rolls. I had a ha! plus twelve and still lost. <laughs> yeah, baby, I've got a plus uh. sixteen. You mess with the queen, you best not miss. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Ross would end this thumb war victorious and be like, ah, I was hoping we could go to Bapsashad first. At the very least, then uh, Newman and I can pick up any last minute supplies. We can tell our housemates to uh, okay. be wary. And yeah. if we all wanted a base while we are in Karas, you know, I know we'll be heading up to the Warding Wilds, but if we wanted a base where we can maybe stay safe during any downtime when we're not in New Arcadia, I have somewhere we can go that Ooh. should help protect us. Okay. Sounds good. So, uh, potentially Teddy could come along? Yeah, I'm Happy to bring Teddy. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, um, I guess just talking quickly out in the open then. So we're all in agreement. We want to go, yeah? Because I will. I want to help. I said I would. Yeah. I... I will... Yes. Good. Thank you. I'm there till the end. Very like taps his hand. Briefly. Right. <laughs> and I kind of assume Rook and Rook and Newman, you kind of you're gonna do it anyway. You kind of live there. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Rook, you might get to like kill that guy you want to kill. So that'd be cool. Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, awesome. And then Bertie looks at Sam and then at the rest of the party. And then kind of does like a head tilt to the side kind of mm, <laughs> expression. Newman just gives a big thumbs up. This whole time he's been like nodding his head in like appreciation <laughs> with everyone saying yes. It's fair. Yeah. I will give what aid I can. Good. Be an invaluable aid. 
it's true. We're all in agreement for that then? Absolutely. He looks at Ross and <laughs> Anya can't see, but he also looks at Anya. <laughs> and then his, his gaze does then just uh, stop at Rook. Um, Rook kind of like looks over at Ross and I guess roll inside. <laughs> Oh, it's slow. Dice rolls in slow motion on D&D Beyond. Oh, Dice rock. Oh, okay, I rolled a seven. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Ross looks... Ross is hard to read. Ross looks fine with it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Sam is an invaluable asset to have on this mission and and she does look at him for reference she has been avoiding looking at him most of today and she says and I would not deny him the opportunity to get his own revenge hmm. so. of course he could come in handy as long as he um <laughs> well We've already had this conversation, so. Did we have? And Anya, like she nods um, in the direction of Bertie and um, Ross, and she's like, "He can come. There'll be no <laughs> argument from me." All right then. Right. Um. So, uh, yeah, the, the end of the day, uh, comes, and just before sunset, you, you receive parcel, um, delivered, delivered by just, just a runner, basically, um, and inside that parcel is, uh, the ten potions of invisibility, um, Four hats of disguise, two scrolls of teleportation, one scroll of revivify, one diamond worth 25,000 gold, um, one, uh, a stone um, that Caius, uh, that, that has been, been, been marked as a distraction. Um, uh, and a ring, uh, a ring of tiny hut, um, and for Sam's requests of being able to actually have armor and a weapon again, um, just mithril half plate and a, uh, scimitar. Um. Excellent. I will note by the evening, um, just quickly, Bertie has gotten his, um, the, like, scale mail he has, and he's got, like, his backpack, and, um, he kind of, like, went through his room and, like, picked up a whole bunch of scrolls, um, and kind of was going through that kind of stuff, and he made everyone some little sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. Are we all good to go? I'm ready. All right, I guess. Oh, wait. And Kais is going to really quickly run out the um, out the back um, after Theodore, um, and in Elvish, it's going to be like, um, "Sorry, we all had a chat before about um, wanting to go, but we didn't really ask you. Um, did Did you want to? We're going to um, to Karas." Did you want to come along? Theodore nods. Right. Well, uh, pack your stuff. We're about to go. And he'll toddle back inside. We're ready. And and Theodore trots following you. Ah, cool. Excellent. Oh, wipe your feet. Oh, so, so, uh, mm. It's fine. Don't worry about cleaning when I come back. It'll be cool. Uh, I, I like to think that as a celestial... Um, that that uh, Theodore's feet don't get dirty. 
the Duke is putting his mud everywhere because Theodore was walking stuff. near the hot tub. <laughs> um, and Bo's like, oh, cool. Oh, I hope you'll be okay. Basically, what I've done, he like turns to Kai, so like in conversationally way, really quickly while the kind of sitting, I presume Ross is getting teleport ready. Like, basically, what I've done is like, I got like three crates full of pastries, and like, I'm, he's just gonna get to free range. So, it should that should take care of him for a while. I hope. I don't know. I told, um, I told Marigold to go check in on him sometimes, though, so that'll be all be good. Did you get Did you get a servant to get to like sort out like your garden? Would they be okay with it? Um. Oh yes, I've got someone who's going to be um uh, living in the house, just sort of taking care of everything. And um, oh, good, 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 excellent, excellent. And um, Fredward and um and that will be staying with the the other horses over in um the Sylvius Manor. Oh, good, so excellent. Hopefully, he doesn't get too fat. Um. We've got a few horses that don't sort of get out very much, and they're, they're getting a little bit large. Um, well, so, is they happy? Well, I, I don't know. They don't really talk to me very much anymore. Um, oh. Well, I mean, none of us travel so that much. Um, obviously, uh, Fred yeah, true. is a different breed, but, um, you know, uh, old Cloppers, he doesn't go anywhere, really. He's um, he's just sort of our, our, our pack horse whenever we go on adventures, but He's a bit older, you know. He, he's, it's good for him to have a bit of a retirement, you know. He just gets to rest. Well, get yes, that's that's the dream, right? Well, yes, but he's very fat. So if we do need to go on any sort of adventures or or anything, we, I don't know if he'll be able to manage it. We might don't have worry. to um, might have to take Violet or um, or heaven forbid, death, and use them as a pack horse. <laughs> But he like kind of like grabs Kaius by sort of like the forearms. I like to turn, she spins him to turn. Like, don't worry, they'll be okay. Right, okay. Um, we'll sort it out when we come back. Take them all out on an adventure. A little one. Got it. Uh, the talk of the pastries reminded me that of one other thing that is in the, the package for you, which is enough uh, basic trail rations to uh, keep you guys going for a month. Hell yeah. It's all it's, right. It's nothing... But he's a master chef, so you know. That's the thing. It's nothing special. It's just, it's just stuff that's going to last. It's stuff that's um it's gonna sustain you but yeah if you if you want anything uh like fresher or more substantial then you're either gonna have to hunt or in the case of pastries bring your own or find some other method of uh procuring better food excellent cool but it will continue to patter on um and get ready for teleport okay all right. Well, um, is everyone good to go? Um, I'll just guess I just get my disguise going. Actually, Sam, I think you probably should wear one of the hats as well. That is something. Who is who is going to claim the hat? Uh, well, I've grabbed one of them. Yes. I can cast disguise self if it is better. Is that going to compromise use... your your spell using Actually, boy? No he, no, he can't. No, he can't. He doesn't have this guy's self. Listen to Rook. Put has. the hat on. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I thought I thought he had it. He does not. Uh, wow. What silly kind of little hat on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we're just going to go to a mirror. Um, I'm going to pop the hat on, and I guess it probably like changes to like. I don't know, a cowboy kind of hat. <laughs> Not like massive, that, I don't know. <laughs> In preparation yeah. for the sun and caress. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I guess she's going to appear to turn into a human. Um, like dark skin, her hair is going to go from like the braided sides with the fiery top to braided sides with the like the small like afro. <laughs> um yeah, no, that's basically what's going to change. And then she's going to be like, oh, oh man, now I kind of look like my mom. Oh, well, this is a lot less noticeable, I suppose. Um, when Sam puts his on, it kind of turns into a, uh, like a cow matching with his um, scar. 
And I will also just say What's very briefly, case? um, the second that Rook changes, um, Anya hears a little like buzz of like a message and Bertie's describing in detail what Rook is wearing, which he probably does every time Rook turns up. <laughs> <laughs> which probably just doesn't help Rook's supreme impression of Bertie because he'll just be staring at her intently. <laughs> Anya <laughs> like very subtly blushes and much Bertie would be used to this. She says nothing in this exchange. <laughs> But Bertie would know that she appreciates it, but she just becomes entirely incapable of speech. Bertie kind of notices her blush and then is like, no problem, girl. <laughs> um, yeah, so these these are these are special rarer hats of disguise too that don't require attunement. Um yeah. Um Caius is going to take off his um, symbol of the Knights of the Seven um, and is going to tuck it into a little pouch um, on the saddle of um, Theodore. Um, and is just turn around to the group and say, well, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure... Um, what we're looking at for disguises. Um, but I don't know exactly how well I'm going to blend in. But I could definitely give it a go. If it would make you more comfortable, Caius, however, for at least this first bit in Bob's Ashad, it's low risk. Right. Most of us will be fine without regular faces. Okay. Um, also, another thought that has just occurred to me, which mm -hmm. I think is quite possibly the smartest thing I've ever come up with. All right. Can we use the hat on Theodore? Would that I've work? Been, I've certainly heard of it being used on bears. For Dummy, shows. you don't let this happen. I will take I'm, it personally. Let's I'm, try. There is, there is nothing in the rules that say a Pegasus <laughs> can't wear a hat of disguise. Who's got the hat? Like, it who's handing have... out the hats right now? Who, who places it on Theodore's head? <laughs> All right, Rook will just like walk up and be like, "I mean, yeah, that's a good point." All right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Well, let's see what turns into actually, and she will carefully affix it onto Theodore's head. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to Theodore and ask him to think of um, what Fredwood looks like. And yeah, uh, appears uh, like a normal horse, specifically Fredwood. What does the hat turn into? Um. A sun hat. A <laughs> mane. Blinkers. <laughs> yeah, racehorse blinkers. <laughs> so cute. cute. I want a sun hat on this horse. <laughs> Give the horse a sun hat. Teddy deserves a sun uh, hat. When one like of those tennis hats. Yeah. A visor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to okay. really uh, quickly break the fourth wall here and say this is the greatest thing I've ever achieved in the <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. I forgive you for everything Kaius has ever done just for this moment. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay. And, and so who is taking the fourth? Sa Sam will interject uh, when, when everyone blending in is absolutely necessary he does have seeming but that that uh, using that will is is towards the higher end of the stuff that he can do okay it's okay i've i've been used to looking like a different person most of my life so i can do that i'm naturally very good at um blending in to places and not being seen so yeah, Bertie already has this guy self at will. Anya is a rogue. Uh, Bertie looks at Newman. Uh, not only am I stinky, I have also, for a very long time, been able to use this guy's self. Oh, cool. Um, I just really don't have a need, but 
Yeah, I feel like this could probably go to someone else. Let's keep the hat just in case then, maybe. I'll keep it on my person if no one wants it, but yeah. Bravari, I know, um, I know you have disguised self. And I know you will be in your home, but if it is safer and it will save your magic, it might be a good idea for you to hold on to it. I'm happy for Newman to hold on to it. And if I need it, we'll know in advance and I can grab it off him. As I said, for now, it would actually probably be weirder for Newman and I not to return home after we said all around town that we were going to an event and it was quite heavily spoken about by my parents uh, as they were quite proud of their little girl getting a, going to a ball. So for now, it would make sense that some of us have our faces. I mostly worry about if we need to infiltrate any sort of Wizards of the Ruins building, but that is a bridge we will cross when we get to it. But thank you for your concern, Anya. I will definitely keep the hat in mind if it saves my magic. Anya just nods. That's <laughs> All right. Uh, everyone moving close. And someone put a hand on Teddy. I don't want to lose him. <laughs> and uh, Ross is going to uh, hold on to just her sword, which has been in Bapsa Shard in the last six months. Mm. And she will jute, jute, teleport us to, uh, like she did, I believe, last time a bunch of us went to Bapsa Shard, like an alley near her house. Yeah. So, yeah, as Bertie's mansion seems to uh, dissipate around you, making way for the uh, the Bopsa alleyway, you find yourself returning to Bopsa Shard. So, what is the first port of call? <sighs> uh, Newman turns to Ross and goes, we should probably visit home straight away. Yes, um, if you all want, you can come with us. If not, uh, there should be some good food vendors nearby if you want to pick some stuff up and then Newman and I can come get you and take you to my spot. Or you can, as I said, you can come with us, say hi to the housemates. Uh, they should be, she looks up at the sky because time zones, funny things. Mm. She's like, uh, they should be in between performances right now. They should all be home. Or at least Yarid will be. Uh, he's always, he loves to come, like be home in the middle of the day. You remember Yarid, don't you, Sam? Ross is kind of fidgeting. Uh, yeah, yeah, been a while. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> Yarid did the, I'm blabbering. What would you guys like to do? Uh, did you want us to visit your house? Are you okay with it? Also, this is oh, this is Karas Kaius. It's very sunny, I think. Yes. Yes, it is currently <laughs> very sunny. But he looks up at the sun and it's like, oh, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> and then just does a thumbs up to Kaius. Um, <clears throat> Kaius is going to um sort of be like, oh, yes, no, it is, it is quite nice. Um, <clears throat> just. While we're here, is there anything we should be looking out for? Because we're technically where we're meant to be. Is that correct? Technically, the Wizards of the Ruins have not been particularly active in Babsashad of the past year. Right. They've been That's... focusing more of their work in New Arcadia. They also tend not to, uh, this is me making assumptions, so Darby, feel free to correct me, uh, with the stern DM finger, but, uh, pointing away, but, uh, Ross will say, um, they tend to not hide their robes. 
while they're out and about. Ah. So just mark them, keep an eye on them. Don't engage unless you absolutely have to. Got it. And something that's been bugging me. They're not all bald, are they? No. Why would they all be bald? Uh, well, all the ones that um, that I've seen have been. Yeah, true, actually. The one at the Dwarven City, and then, like, Zath was kind of bald in their true form. Like, yeah, that's kind of weird. You, Dwarven City, um, I think I know that... I think I recall something about that operation. That was an Earth Ganassi. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot remember the name, but... Um, yeah, it nearly fireballed yes. me to death, actually, before we oh. met Kai. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Ah. Uh, He's... Yeah. He's a smear now. Yeah. No. Well and gone. No, not, not all Wizard of the Ruins are bald. Although, come to think of it, I don't think any of... Uh, no, I don't think any of the remaining Dread Magisters have hair. Ah, so good. Maybe that's uh, how you were found out. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's... You know what? We'll just all go to... Your house! house. Yeah, let's Ross! Go, um, let's... Yeah, show, show us your house, guys! Yeah, no, it's been a while since you were all here, and Caius has never been. Okay. Let's... Let's go. Um, and as... Ross is... As we walk down, Newman is pointing everything out to guys. He'd be like, now that's the place that I used to egg when I was really, really young. And that's the place that I set on fire accidentally when I was learning how to start a fire. And, and he would just keep on pointing yeah. things out about like things he used to do in his childhood and stuff like that. And that's a really ugly tower that I want to knock down someday. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, you get I will say very, very quickly, Ross would have dropped to wherever Sam was in the line. And she would be doing a very similar thing, but quietly. Yeah. Uh, Sam is also, he's probably going to drop a seeming on the group um, too. Just, Ooh. he's not changing anyone's facial features necessarily. He's just um, making their outfits less loud. Um, <laughs> uh, like very, very much local fashion. Good luck. Hyas is inconspicuous. Hmm. Uh. Uh, I mean, Yubin can just do that anyway, so he can change his code yeah. of his, uh, the color of his code anyway. So. Yeah. Also, um, I'm you. aware that Sam is a bisexual man. Um, however, this is just very low-level homophobia also, <laughs> um, and I am going to call him out he, for that. He probably, <laughs> Honestly, he probably does very little to um, Anya's outfit because it is no no just in burst hold however and very <laughs> yeah oh, but very queerly and very my, yeah uh, my belt of fire giant strength i've dubbed the belt of major lesbian because yeah. that's the lesbian flag colors for the uh, jewels so like if he changes those colors he doesn't, he doesn't, <laughs> oh, yeah. he doesn't change He's the dropped. colors but he might mute them a little so as not to okay. attract attention fair, 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 fair. Um, <laughs> He's just because he's aware that it's just an illusion. He's trying to keep everything as um, as close as possible to what it physically is, but just draw less attention. Right. Um, cool. So we we go to Ross and Newman's house, uh, which a brief reminder because it's been a it's been a hot minute mm. uh it's a pretty it's a it's pretty um it's a like one story brick building it's got a big wooden door it's got a couple of big windows up the front which uh would have actually this time of day the curtains would not be drawn uh so there's lots of light streaming in um and it's just this cute little like it's it's not all that wide but it seems quite deep uh and there's little alleys either side of it but ross would have popped us like a couple alleys down and not directly <laughs> next to the house and uh when they arrive if there's nothing on the door to indicate that you know like still out busking call later um She'll just pull a key out and open the front door. Okay. 
Um, and as as you guess, like Yarid is here. He says, "Oh, Russ and uh, Newman, and you've brought company." Uh, oh, Sam. Been a while. Uh, hmm. Gosh, I feel bad for Sam. <laughs> And yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Bertie, Rook, and Anya. I don't think I've had a, the pleasure of this. Uh, this one. Ice is gonna elbow his way to the front of the group and go, "Hi, my name is Caius Viator Silvius." Um, and he uh, he grabs your hand as you offer it out, and he says, "Oh, pleasure." So, for reference for the audience, Yarid is a non-binary Eganasi who uses he/they pronouns. They have a, a shock of white hair with one blue streak at the front. Uh, they often wear turtlenecks and overalls, despite the fact that Bapsashad is incredibly hot. Uh, he is six uh, foot two. Is six foot two? I'd forgotten about that. Uh, and also, uh, if he's not carrying it, nearby him would be his viol, which is his bardic instrument. Uh, are any of the others home? Uh, no, I think they're uh, they're organizing stuff for a for a show. <gasps> That's right. That was on yeah. tonight. Fuck. Uh, well, um, everyone feel free to, uh, take a seat, grab a drink, uh, but very quickly, though, uh, you know what I'm gonna say, don't you? More out-of-town work. Yeah. Very out-of-town work. For Sorry. quite some time. We is there anything a... we can help with now <laughs> whilst we're here? Uh, no, I think I think everything's uh, pretty much uh, in place, especially once the others get back. But when when do you think you're leaving again? Uh, sometime today. We were uh, going to go check out the theatre before we went out. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably head out sometime soon. And there is potential we may not be back for a month. Month, okay. Hey, I don't think there's anything that's, that we can't work around that with, but. Uh... <sighs> No, yes, so apologies to Sarah once again. I know she's going to have my ass for pausing Hamlet rehearsals once again, but that's, uh, I'll cop that when I'm back. Uh, and she does look at Newman and she's like, and sorry once again for lumping you all with our portion of the chores list. Um, I'll uh, make up for it later. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all right. Uh, I mean, I mean, Newman, you've already made things so much easier with all your little contraptions, so... You're not, welcome. Not quite as bad as it could have been. Ah, uh, but... So that'll buy me a month, yeah? <laughs> uh, might, might, uh... Might get you a week or two less of having to make it up to us. There we go, that's the least I can ask for. Yeah. Um, but there is probably something else me and Ross need to talk to you and everyone here for that matter. Are the others here at the moment? No, they won't be back for a bit. But I, should, we I, wait in, should we wait until then, Ross? We can. We can wait for the others to come back. All right. Uh, it's not like we can't fill time. Uh, Newman and I will just uh, go uh, 
Sorara stuff. Uh, everyone, again, feel free to help yourselves to some food and drinks. I'm sure you all remember where the drink bucket is. Uh, and uh, feel free to show Caius around. And Sam around. Sam has also never been here before. And uh, you know, you, Yuri, you and Sam can sure reminisce about college. I'm sure you have a lot to catch up on. And then Ross is just gonna, from whatever bag any of us have, she's gonna like pull out the giant mountain of her ripped dress and she's just gonna go to her in Newman's room. Okay. <laughs> just um, exit. Newman is going to go into the cupboard and pull out a mug for everyone. Um, they're all mixed mugs. Um, this isn't the kind of household where all the mugs are the same type. So some of you get stripy ones, some of you get like wavy ones, some of you get like just really just like abstract retro coloured square ones. And one of you gets that one where it's like a really, um, really like sort of scruffy blue squiggle with a very fine black squiggle in the middle as well. Um, and then Darby, if you allow it, Newman then points behind him to the tea machine behind him, which is a downsized version of Cigar's tea machine. Nowhere near as good. Only offers four types of tea <laughs> <laughs> instead of the infinite <laughs> amount of tea that Def the other one could. Definitely, definitely something that Newman could have made. Excellent. Excellent. Can't wait for the um, secret side... Uh, plot line of cigar um trying to hunt down newman for breaking patent laws um <laughs> that's that's going to be a lot of fun um but no if you look closely it is different it is very different it has newman's name on it not cigars <laughs> 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 and then Newman is also going to uh, rush away um, almost like comically with his body leaving before his arm does after he points towards the team machine. Um, and then, um, yeah, runs to his room where he can go grab his armor and all sorts of other stuff. All right. Um, so probably not too long in the scheme of things before the uh, remaining players return um and unless there is anything uh anyone wants to cover before then uh, um, yeah oh i was gonna say but he just patters around he does like noticeably um not that anyone's probably looking but like uh, when uh ross mentioned like the like the little esky fantasy esky <laughs> where they have all their alcohol he looks very like in, like, he, like, stares at that for a bit longer than he should, um, and then kind of, like, awkwardly goes over to the tea machine, does that. Um, Caius is still relaxed, but is keeping an eye out, like, is sort of, like, wandering around and kind of keeping an eye out of any front-facing windows just to see what is happening outside. Anya's, um... While she's not wandering around, um, she is holding a mug full of tea. She's not actually drinking it. She's just holding it. And she's standing by an open window, um, listening out for anything. It was kind of like inspecting the place. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was looking a little subdued as well. Okay. Uh, oh, Ross? Oh, I was just going to say, uh, do you want to do the very brief physical descriptors of the other housemates uh, or should you, I? You could do the, the, the quick descriptors. Cool. Also, I'm sure Sam and uh, Yarid are having a very riveting conversation. <laughs> That's just like, uh, mm. Mm, sure has been nearly yeah. seven years. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So the other housemates would be there's Bron. she's five foot four she's a dark-skinned karasi woman she has a lot of curly hair she wears like she would be wearing like a tight black shirt if they're coming back from performing she'd have this big colorful skirt and she carries a flute that had the mouthpiece is a butterfly and it's got little jangles hanging hanging off the end there's sydney who is uh the one with a tramp stamp he is a uh, about the same height as no he's the same height as ross yeah, he's five eight 
He's got long, wavy black hair. Uh, he's got he's he's a dark skin Karasi as well, but a little lighter than Bron. Uh, he's wearing a lot of tan leather. He has a lot of gold necklaces. Everything is undone to the belly button. Uh, he is carrying a hand drum, which has the same gold patterning as Ross's tambourine. There would be, you've already met Yarid, you're with Ross. Then there's Sarah, who is a six foot six Asima. Uh, in our world, she would look a uh, mixed race uh, Japanese in appearance, but she has a blonde mullet, like a short platinum blonde with gold flex mullet. She'd be wearing giant earrings of some description, and she wears all black uh, and dark blue like leathers but it's all crop tops arms bared and it's all got like drapery that looks like wings and she would be carrying a loot and i believe of these three characters two of them have accents that are dealer's choice so yeah <laughs> those are the three housemates that walk in You're back. Um, yeah, so just trying to double check accents here. Sydney's got the transatlantic accent. Yes, that's that's right. Um, hello, hello. You're back. Um, you you look like you've got something to tell us. Yes. Well, first off. Uh, Rook, Birdie, Anya, Caius, Sam. Uh, this is Bron, Sydney, and Sarah. Uh, sorry that it now is very squishy in the living room. Ah, uh, you may want to take a seat for this one. Okay. Um, and they all take a seat. Ross is like doing a similar thing to what Birdie does, where she's like just kind of tapping her fingers together and then like stops and just kind of like clenches and unclenches her hands. And then she just looks at Newman as if to say, like, help. <laughs> um. Oh, hang on. I need to just clarify with you first, Zoe. Mm -hmm. Um. Do they still not know? They they all know that Ross works for the Concord. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, New yeah, Newman would have been with her when she told them. Uh, they all expressed disappointment in her not telling them earlier, but they have all been relatively fine with it. In a roundabout sort of way. Mostly because nothing much has happened in the past year. Yeah. Um, as you're aware, um, we tend to be very opposed to the wizards. And they've made their next move. That celebration we were attending didn't end up being a celebration in the end and was the stage for them announcing what seems to be war over there as well and from what I've heard they've considered Karas theirs They've had a complete victory. So. Um, he looks at, and I'm going to butcher this name, Yarad. Yarid. Yarid. Um, he looks at Yarid and goes, you can probably piece together why we might be away for a month's time. And that's because we've bought Karas a month's time. Also, we think um, they're not particularly happy over there with what the wizards have done. 
so we need to try our very best to protect the people of Karas. And as a result, it might start to become very dangerous here. A lot of things are going to change. And we're worried about everyone's safety, especially your safety. Now, what's the general read of the room right now, Darby? Uh, quite somber. Um, I would like to imagine that nothing will happen to Bapsa, but there's really no guarantee, and being a coastal city as well, especially when foreign powers may have the intention to invade, it might be one of the most dangerous places as well. So... I guess, Eve, especially if we fail to do what we need to do in the next month, then I think it might be a good idea for everyone to leave Bopsa because it won't be safe. We can organise everything. We can help you all get out of here safely. And whilst we're away for this next month, Perhaps it might be a good idea to lie low. Uh, this whole time, he's constantly looking at Ross for, like, any input, any <laughs> ideas whether or not he said the right things, the wrong things. But I'm imagining he's only getting... He's just getting, like, Ross putting hands in her face or something like that. Ross is so deeply, visibly upset. Mm. just at everything but she does kind of stand up a little bit straighter and she says um you can take as long as you need to organize to leave if something happens before you are able to uh, the theatre is in a good enough shape that you should be able to seek protection there and it should be able to help you. Um, but this could be it. This could be the end of it all. Either way. And, um, I can't have you all getting hurt. Any, re uh, any recommendations on how we get away? Um, a couple, probably, um, if you want any kind of route via the rebellion you can talk to my parents uh they'll they'll help you out okay. and they'll take the secret to their grave if they must uh. um if i can be of assistance um i am quite good at not being seen when I don't want to be. Leave quietly. Leave in the night. Only tell... I would not be announcing your departure to anyone who would not be coming with you or be helping you leave. All nod solemnly. And I'm sure we could organize safe passage across to another country where the majority, well, where we've basically just come from. I'm sure they could provide the resources to protect 
as many people as we can. But that's not discreet. So that would be a last resort. Navora. I have not been home to Navora for a long time. It has its own struggles, but it is untouched by the wizards. I can... I can get in touch with some old contacts if you would like to provide safe passage. I would just need use of ascending if someone can spare one. So, there's options. Uh, um, I was saying to Yarid earlier, we will probably... Uh, we're going to go to the theatre in a little bit. Um, whether or not we leave the city today is, is a matter of us getting our supplies together. But we will be leaving very, very soon. So, if you need help from us uh, within the next few hours would be the best thing to do if you there is also potential if need be that I can teleport you somewhere but it's whatever would be most discreet and most safe at the end of the day I think there's a chance that you're going to be successful I think we should Hold out some hope and keep an eye on things. <laughs> if thi if things go start looking like they're going to the worst, or we don't hear from you in three weeks, we'll reach out to your parents and use their contacts to get away. Um, is there any way it does message have a maximum range? Message does, sending does not. Sending does not. Okay, perfect. Um, could Newman perhaps? Um, are we intending on leaving this day or the next day? Team. I'm just uh, curious. It, uh... <laughs> I we are on a pretty severe time limit. Yeah, we might be leaving by the end of today. Ah, cool, cool, cool. Um, I was just thinking of whether or not I could replicate some sending stones. Um, but that's a long rest. Yeah. Um. At this point, um, Anya is going to send a message directly to Ross and she's like um, Ravari if you would like I can contact Vola and her team and they can stay here until safe passage is needed and offer protection They, they, she, there are no words coming through her reply. You just get this feeling of overwhelmedness. Um, and then, uh, then she says, if you believe they could help. I'm sure we can set them up somewhere where they can keep an eye on my friends. I will need to borrow a sending, but they will protect them. I trust her. Thank you. Um, I do also want to state for the record, um, Vola most likely would have 
uh, cycled some members of her team too um, because that is just generally how she works. So, um, yeah, that I will discuss outside because it will be a background thing anyway. Yeah. They'll be right in there. So, uh, if you are staying, then I guess the thing is to be ready, be vigilant, behave as normal. Because the longer the wizards think we're doing nothing, the more time we have, to a certain extent. But if there's one thing I've never doubted about you all, it's your acting skills, so. <laughs> there's a kind of bleak chuckle at that. Um, <laughs> that one. Except for you, Sarah, you're a far better director. Um. <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> Don't fuck you. <laughs> um, Just, I'm come not back safe. safe. Come back safe, Ross. We intend to. That's all we intend to do. And I would like to roll a deception on that. Okay. Ah, no, wrong button. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. You don't. You don't know which of them uh, <laughs> takes you at face value and which of them sees through you. Human cool. does. <laughs> oh yeah. Of course he does. Uh, Bestie. <laughs> yeah. Most. Most of. Oh, Newman takes takes Ross at face value. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is that is that what you mean? Yes, he rolled yeah. an eleven. Yeah. Oh. Um. Um. Anya will just very quickly um say to them. Uh, I will contact a friend as you are staying who can keep a watch over things and provide safe passage uh, when the time is right. Thank you. The name is Vola and her and her team can be trusted. Keep an ear out. Well, um, that's all we really had to say. So. Group hug? You'll all kind of get in for a group hug. Ross does gesture for the party to join in. Newman's already there. <laughs> of course he is. He's a housemate. Exactly. Yeah. Anya is on the outskirts and only touching the people she is close with. But he like stands for a while. He's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Well, yep. Yeah, yeah, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> Get up and do that as well. Rook looks pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> mm, yeah. But he also looks There's uncomfortable. a lot of big people in this group. So, yeah. yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> Ross just Ross just likes making people uncomfortable on purpose. So, <laughs> um, cool. Well, uh, uh, may Senis Taka bless you for the performance tonight. Um, we'll be heading to the theater and checking that out, and then probably be on our way. So.
When you jump into the stream, may you stay dry. And may Senna's Taka bless you. I'm trying to think. I I cannot recall the the response to that. Off the top oh, of my I head, I knew you they... wouldn't, so I said the whole okay. call response. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably that's possibly what threw me. Yeah, uh, sorry. Apologies. No, all good, all good. Um, all right. So I take it you then head to the theater. Yes. Um, Caius is the last one to leave. Um, and he's just going to if there's any housemates kind of like still hanging around um he's just gonna sort of awkwardly walk up sort of awkwardly looking at the door and then back at them and just very quickly um hello um <clears throat> i'm Caius. i i think that was mentioned um i don't really know any of you but i do know ross and i do know the people that she travels with. Believe me when I say that I know she will do everything she can to make this right. We all will. Everything's going to be fine. I'm sure of it. Just stay strong. Thank you. Um, oh, okay, bye. And we'll leave. <laughs> Also, before everyone leaves, Newman will probably be the first one to leave, and he might do some very casual scouting as well, just up ahead, just to see, has anyone been lingering? Has Because it was a big group that went into the house. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, roll yeah did Anya hear anything? Uh, oh. Roll me a perception check, Anya. Roll me a perception check, Newman. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Sorry, just... Um, so, 15, you don't notice anything really out of place. 27, which is the lowest she can roll. Okay. Um, yeah, not nothing of particular um, note. There, there does seem... It does sound like there's maybe some increased um, military presence here compared to the last time you were here. But... Right, Beyond check. that, yeah, nothing major. I was also looking out the window, but he probably couldn't pick anything else up from that, so... Uh, yeah. And just to state it for the record, Newman will also change the colour of his cloak to not be as bright and colourful. More, okay. more like, I guess you could say, the now standard colours for um, Tabaxi's. Yeah. Okay. I think um, when there's a moment there's like not that many people in the streets or anything um, Rook's going to say to the group are you sure they're going to be alright on their own? I mean thanks to uh, you know who uh, they might know exactly where they live and their connection to you Ross they would have learned all that through me. My friends are strong. They will do what is best. And they will act in the best way they can. And Anya will have friends protecting them. Well, uh has more connections than I do and will be able to get here quickly. Mm. All right. So they'll be fine. Yeah. Anyway, That's... we're going to kill these bastards before they even get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yes. <laughs> I mean, look how look how look how long the the, the, the those two we hit got last night lasted. Not long. <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll crush him in the dirt. <laughs> Hopefully at month's end it won't even be something you'll have to worry about anymore. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you make your way to the theatre. Ross, would you like to describe what the party sees? Yay! Uh, so, you would see a very uh, freshly painted building. Uh, it looks like a large town hall, if you were to kind of use an Our World equivalent, but it's a lot taller. Um, and it certainly seems to be a lot deeper. Um, it would be large, like, uh, it's just, it. you can tell that it is like just a normal building, but there is like a facade up at the front to make it look kind of old and like our equivalent of Gothic. Uh, and there would be like a sign on the front, but the sign is still covered up with like a big, like, painter's sheet or whatever like the name has not been announced yet uh there'd be these two big wooden doors and ross would open them up uh they'd probably have like a lock on the front she'd unlock it and open it up and you would see that it is very much on the inside a very recently renovated space uh there's a little hallway there's a window in the wall on the right side of the hallway when you first walk in that is full of junk it is clearly meant to be the ticketing stand when it is eventually built that hallway then opens up into a big room where on the left hand side on kind of like the wall that makes up the other side of the hallway there's like a little window with with a bunch of junk in it that would become the the techie box uh the bio box and then it's just a big empty room hardwood floors that have been very recently polished there's bare wood walls that and there's little like drawings stuck up on the walls uh, with fantasy blue tack that are uh, like paint samples of like blacks and reds and like all the colors to go on the walls. There'd be a couple torches and little sconces all around. Uh, again, very high ceilings, um, not a lot of windows. There's a, the most done up part is the stage right at the back of the building. It's just a big, like a one and a half meter high, like stage, but it's got the big velvet curtains. It's all beautifully laid out. It's all beautifully polished. But the stage is also currently covered in masking tape. It's got little like X's and lines and shapes drawn all over it. Uh, and the curtains are also pulled back so you can see that there's two doors either side that lead to what you assume is the backstage. And there's also in the ceiling uh, a recently patched hole. It's in so recent that you can still tell where they fixed it. And there's also a large stack of chairs um, in the corner, uh, that haven't been, uh, like, set out or installed yet. And this is Ross's theatre. Yeah, and she's just kind of standing there with her hands on her hips. <laughs> Has Bernie seen this before? I don't think he's probably travelled to Karras much. Um, she's told him about it. Has yeah, if, if Bertie has come to Karras, Ross has definitely taken him to the theatre. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Birdie, Birdie would know. Uh, so Birdie instead nudges Caius in like the sides, like, "Hey, isn't it cool? This is uh, wow." I mean, <laughs> no, don't tell this Russell lad. Almost as cool as your school, but still pretty cool. Well, I mean, my the school is quite small. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, I mean, there's technically more people in it, but... Okay, they're, they're both equally cool. Does that make you feel more comfortable? Uh, sure. <laughs> yes. No, this is, this is, uh, it, it, it's, it's cool. It's very cool. Looks really good, Ross. I like what you did to the roof. Thank you. It's good not to get rained on anymore. Not as drafty, no. Very Ooh. good improvement. Yeah. It's hell getting up there, though. I can't imagine. Isn't this cool? <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, fun theater. <clears throat> that Sam is looking up at it all in awe. Yeah. 
yeah. Like I always said, got my own space, so. Uh, Newman's helped out with uh, bits and pieces, but he's mostly had his own projects going on, so this has mostly been me and the others. But, uh, oh, look, and she like runs across the room and like vaults up onto the stage, just kind of stands there. And she's like, look, look how good the, I mean, this is maybe only cool to me, but like, look at how good the eyeline is. Like it doesn't, I could, and she just like sits on the floor. She's like, you can still see everything I do. This is, oh, it's so much better than the street. I, oh. <laughs> Guys is mildly confused, but applauds. <laughs> uh, thank yeah, you. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't say I understand it much, but it's a nice-looking space. Um, what's the what's the purpose of the big curtains? The oh, big sheets. So, uh, those are for like uh, in between the acts and stuff. We still need to. These are mostly uh, just so we can see what it looked like. For now, we want to get them hooked up so that way we can work out a system where they go up and down. Uh, instead of side to side, because that'll be a little more, you know, you can do a little more with that. But uh, just, you know, to signify that, like, you can all go get your wine now. Because uh, the curtain's down. And then at the end of the show, it indicates that you can go home. Uh, yeah. And it also, I mean, there's a whole lot of technical stuff around it, but that's kind of the, um, yeah, basics, really. Um. All right, I, I see. Hmm. <laughs> Rook's just like trying to decipher that. <laughs> so I'm not used to a, a dedicated building or anything, but it looks great. Yeah, we even had one in, oh, how old was I? I would have been 21. Yeah, it's been about five years since we had a, a real theater. Five or six, so. It's been very exciting, but, and she claps her hands and stands back up and she's like, that is not the real reason this is uh, important. What I have brought you here for is that we can use this as a base. We can set up our things here. It can be far less conspicuous. If anyone walks in, we can just say we're rehearsing for a show. They'll believe it. Um, also, as we've worked on it, as we've put our, you know, love, sweat, and blood into this place, it gives some back. So, uh, if we were in a situation where we ended up, not literally, but if we were in a situation where, say, a fight were happening here, uh, maybe if you felt particularly inspired, you would feel the most inspired you could be. Uh, Anya, you do, you do know, like, it's strange here, like hearing, like all, all the kind of ambient sounds of day-to-day -day life are a lot more, they almost sound deliberately rhythmic. Um in this yeah, area. Yeah, so Anya, um, she's been very sort of quiet the whole time um, and has been listening um, not so much to what's been said. It's almost like she, um, that went a bit out of focus for her because she's taking in like the way that the sounds are different in like this different sort of environment um because obviously auditoriums they're designed to have that sound sort of wrap around you and one that's built with magic and with um like that care it just sounds very unusual to her so she's kind of distracted from everything by listening just to the different way the sound moves and that's it. that's what she's doing 
Now, yes. Are there windows in this auditorium area? Uh, there would be. Okay. Quite high up. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, it also, um, helps me to feel particularly able to inspire others. You know, all the world's a stage and I am but a player. Uh, but also, uh, if you do feel particularly inspired by something that I have done, as bards tend to be able to do for other people, uh, if you maybe don't feel inspired at any one particular point or another, keeping that inspiration in your heart can actually make you more skilled. Which is the in-game way of saying that uh, while an ally has unspent bardic inspiration, their proficiency bonus increases by plus one at every uh, initiative 20. So you're, you're mixing uh, up stronghold actions with uh, the class feature improvements. So for folks oh. wondering, we're using some strongholds and followers rules. Um, is this what MCDM. you said? Yes. Okay. So the stronghold, <laughs> the stronghold actions are the ones that are specific to being in and around the stronghold. Right. The class feature improvement, you have... Um, Anywhere? You have a number of those to use. Um, but a number of those to use anywhere. You just need, oh, okay. you just need to, um, take what is known as an extended rest in the area around your, um, your stronghold, the theater to recharge them. Right, 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 so right, they, right, 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 So it's right. a resource that doesn't recharge on a long rest. It recharges on this extended rest mechanic that they okay. use. Well, Ross would only feel that way in the theatre because apart from the ball, she hasn't been in any fights. So. Yeah. And also it... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, cool. But, uh... Yeah, there's... Like most theatres, there's magic in the walls, but in this one, there really is magic in the walls. So... If we get attacked here, it is the best possible option. And on that Ta -da! note... <laughs> um, on that note, Anya, you hear this almost rhythmic marching and jangling of armor outside. Stop. And you hear this force of magic as a bead um, flies through um, one of the open windows and lands in the center of everyone. Um, Sam, Sam looks at it for a brief moment and then and says- Could, could, um, with her being able to sort of hear that happening and sort of getting mm -hmm. a jump on any of that, um, could she very like, uh, basically, um, could she take a reaction to that very quickly? <laughs> um, if you're asking if you can counter spell, this is no. Not a spell. She was gonna. Um, Human wants to dispel music on and send well. it back out the window. Ooh. Okay. Um. Hmm. Not technically a reaction spell, but I'll I'll allow you to make a um a charisma check opposing the DC. A charisma check, okay. So roll, roll a d20 and add your charisma modifier. N uh, not with proficiency or anything, just no. the modifier? No, yep. just with the modifier. And if Anya fails, can Newman prepare a dispel magic? Um, this is an instantaneous effect. I'm just breaking it down for the drama. Um, yeah. Nine. Nine. So, so you you all hear um, Sam say uh, say as this bead lands in the middle of you, Corba. Um, 
as it explodes. Can I get everyone to roll me a dexterity saving throw? Twenty-one. Not bad. She's got proficiency in deck saves also. Yes. It will if also mean that you have team. no um no damage at all because yep. high level rogue. Um, um twenty-seven. Twenty-seven, and, that's eight. Can I also use my reaction to um use that dodge one where I can take half damage from a from, I can't quite remember yes, the wording of it, but I'll it's, find uh, it. Yeah. That, that's uh, Uncanny Dodge. That's the one. Does Newman not have the... Is Newman no. not high enough? No, it's a ninth <laughs> level. He is eighth level of Rogue. Oh, shit. All right. Ross got a 12. Oof. That's a failure. I got a, got a 19. That is a success. Pius got a 17. That is a failure. Only got a 17. Okay, that is a failure. So, Ross, Caius, and Birdie taking full damage. Rook. Does Rook have evasion or. Um, no, I'm, I don't I'm, think so. I think no. I, she I doesn't think have I'm anything. I'm thinking of third edition where barbarians get yeah. that as well. Um, so, yeah. So, Newman, I think you take water <laughs> because you succeeded. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so Rook. And Sam take half. I just need to bring up my dice roller because this is quite a few dice. Um, and as this explosion, um, explosive orb um, of, of with a twenty foot radius blast. Um, um, and if it, I don't know if this means anything, but Ross was up on the stage and we were all down. It is, it, it's still like, the tw 20 foot radius is a big sphere. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Let me. So, um, so the Hellfire Orb is going to deal uh, 35 points of fire damage. So that, so anyone taking full, that's 35. Ross is resistant to fire. Same. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, on your take. Berthold uh, also so we take is, and his Ooh, um, the damage? little eye tattoos on his arm, um, like so they've his... widened. And seem to take like a flash of red as the fire hits him, and then like they all close. So Caius takes 35, Ross and Birdie take 12, oh, Newman takes, and, the, and then Newman and Rook take six, um, and Anya takes none. Um, and then there is also necrotic damage to this as well, which is 34 points of necrotic damage. So, uh, so, um, so those who uh, failed, so take all of that. Uh, Rook uh, and Newman. Uh, no, uh, Rook takes half, so seventeen, okay. and then Newman takes quarter because of his reaction. <laughs> but um, he also takes half because he's resistant to necrotic. Ah, yes. Uh huh. Um, yeah, that's where we're going to end it for, <laughs> for this week's episode. Uh, all right, oh, see you next dear. week, everyone. <laughs> see you next week. Boy, fast. Ross's theatre. Catch you all later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Sorry, Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Well, welcome to Bob's Shard, where <laughs> nothing ever happens. That's very interesting. Don't visit, please. There's nothing there. <laughs> Says the wizards to all it, tourists. <laughs> yes. yes. It's just a forest and a beach. Who likes forests and beaches? But if you like tall towers, <laughs> come around. <laughs> we have a really fucking unnecessarily big one. <laughs> Mm. And if it's not big enough on the outside, it's even bigger on the inside. <laughs> hey. I want you to record a Wizards Tourist uh, advertisement now. Or it was, until someone stole our jam. 